good morning, everyone. And we are going to start our paper presentation of this each week. And okay, the first person is Juan Fernando. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk uh, about this review um, called uh, a review on recent developments for biomolecule biomolecule uh, separation at analytical scale using microfluidic devices. So uh, in in this talk, I'm going to 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 show you uh, about this this review uh, these first three topics. Uh, the introduction, the stationary phases, and the surface modifications. <coughs> so uh, the separation and the accurate uh, identification of highly bio valuable biomolecules like uh, nucleic acids, proteins, polysaccharides from the complex uh, biological fluids like serum, milk, cell extracts, extracts uh, required uh, add uh, importance. So the limited sample volume, volumes and the fat, pathological condition of specimens increase the complexity for selective uh, separation and identification of target analytes that are uh, present at micro and nano levels. So the uh, chromatographic uh, methods uh, efficiently separate biomolecules in a uh, pure form, but uh, require large sample volumes and are uh, time consuming. Uh, the capillary uh, electrophoresis uh, require smaller samples volumes and relatively uh, fast, but uh, uh, can separate biomolecules only on the basis of the charge to size. Uh, a development of a microfluidic device by bio, bio, biomolecule uh, separation <coughs> requires uh, involvement and knowledge of chemistry. Uh, for example, the stationary phase materials and the modification for ligand attachment or surface uh, functionalization to prevent non-specific adsorption of biomolecules on the microfluidic uh, surface. So uh, in, in this topic, the stationary phases and, the, and their uh, incorpor incorporation within the microchannels. So the stationary phase plays a pivotal role in chromatography systems to separate uh, molecules like uh, resins, uh, monoliths, and very recently uh, nanowires were embedded into the microfluidic devices from biomolecule separation. <coughs> In addition, the use of surface uh, surface functionalized uh, microchannels, open channel system as such, and uh, pillar structure microchannels have been uh, studied as uh, stationary phases. So uh, we have uh, like four, uh, four ways like uh, open a channel and filler structure microchannels, the chromatography, chromatography resins, the natural polysaccharides like agarose, cellulose, uh, polymer, polymers like uh, polyacrylamide, uh, trisacryl, and metacrylate, and rigid absorbents like inorganic materials like silica and alumina are used as uh, chromatography resin uh, materials. The chromatography resins uh, possess high surface area and high absorption capacities. But however, uh, the lack of mechanical strength and the tedious pack packing process require of fluids to hold packet resins intact and the high uh, pressure build up and low mass transfer limit 
they limit their, their use uh, at analytical scale. Uh, this person, um, this group of scientists, uh, discuss the continue, uh, continuing uh, research for uh, some alternatives. And at a preparative scale, uh, they say that the chromatography resins remain the prime choice as the stationary phase materials. <coughs> some of uh, the studies reported the use of wear structures, varying the heights, uh, to tightly hold the resins. Uh, Chan et al. Uh, et al. <coughs> introduced a polyethylene uh, membrane as a free material to hold silica reg resins uh, within the microchannel uh, confinement. Okay, uh, another one is the monoliths. <coughs> a, a monolith is Define it as a um, single piece of a continuous stationary phase with highly interconnected porous network. And due to the high pore uh, interconnectivity, uh, flow is convective and there result in high mass uh, transfer of molecules that leads to rapid separation. And the monoliths are classified into or inorganic and organic. And these monoliths are uh, also commercially available in different formats like uh, CIM, uh, com convective interactive media like disc, rods, and uh, capillaries. Uh, the desired functionality on the monolith can be achieved using uh, two approaches. The first approach is a multi-step process that involves modification of existing chemical moieties uh, like epoxy, e hydroxyl, or aldehyde on a pre-synthesized uh, monolith. And the second approach is a single-step process that involves addition of uh, monomers or Functional, functionalized with, uh, for example, methyl, uh, sulfon sulfonate, or carboxylate to a solution of co-monomer and cross-linker molecules prior to in situ uh, polymerizations. <clears throat> and finally, the uh, nanowires. The nanowire. Uh, structures were introduced to uh, crea create uh, spatial and controlled nanostructures besides the cost effective fabrication process. And here we have an image that illustrates the, these uh, stationary phases and, and their uses. And thank you. Uh, in the next week, I'm going to continue with this. Uh, with the next topic. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be presenting this paper, a simple, low-cost, and reusable megafluidic uh, gradient strategy and its application in modeling cancer invasion. So the device is uh, formed by directly mounting the PDMS megafluidic chip on the polyesterine based cultured dishes or plates. The microfluidic network consists of four channels, four signal channels separated from a cell culture channel using hydrogel barriers. The hydrogel is uh, confined in the specified microchannel by applications of micropost and due to the hydrophobic nature of the epidemias. By uh, injecting a bioactive factor in one of the signal channels, Chemostatic molecules diffuse through the porous hydrogel into the culture chamber and generate a chemo chemotaxis gradient from uh, the source signal channel. Diffusion based microfluidic gradient generations with uh, hydrogel, hydrogel barriers have substantial advantages over, over other systems, including providing a shear free culture system by elimination of convection, establishment of uh, continuous chemical gradients 
fuzzy fabrication uh, without the need or for multi thickness channels, long channels or small features, and uh, the ability to, to be able to uh, applicate uh, extracellular matrix based materials. This uh, proposed system in the study overcomes the also problems frequently happening in preparation of similar microchips. First, due to the implementation of the polyestylene and as the absence on the microchannels, the system not, does not require so subsequent coating and therefore is not limited to a specific cell types. Cells can be either directly seeded inside the microchannels, forming a 2D culture system, or encapsulated in a an hydrogel for uh, their more realistic 3D culture. Also, uniform and reproducible surface condition ensures uniform cell seeding and reliable results. And finally, the system is detachable, so using a brief tape cleaning followed by sterilizations, the microchips can be mounted again in well plates and uh, used in uh, other experiments. The bonding strength of the PDMS to the polystyrene was measured using a microfluidic strategy. Dye containing water was injected with a predefined channel dimension and control flow rate. The bonding strength was evaluated based on the flow resistance in the device. The results show that increasing PDMS curing time generally decreased the bonding strength because decreasing the curing time reduces the stiffness of the PDMS structure and enhances compliant contact area and therefore additional strength. However, insufficient curing curing can cause improper cross-linking. They uh, further measured the PDMS polystyrene bonding strength over time, and although the bonding strength decreased by the addition of the PDMS, it remained in a reasonable range, and uh, the device has uh, been used more than 30 times over a period of uh, more than six months without uh, any leakage. They further assessed the kinetics and the shapes of the chemostatic uh, signals using numerical and experimental, experimental evaluations. And uh, while the diffusion rate of the chemostatic factor depends on the porosity of the hydrogel and its diffusion coefficient, the simulation results indicated that a relatively stable concentration gradient could be generated after two hours within a wide range of hydrogel porosities and diffusion coefficients. They uh, further examined the capability of the device to produce uh, different chemical gradient profiles, and uh, the device was able to generate both, both uh, polynomial, as you can see in the first area here, I don't know if you can see <laughs> my mouse, and uh, linear here down below in D and F. To demonstrate, the potential of the developed microfluidic uh, strategy for uh, capturing cellular behavior, the invasion of breast cancer cells into an extracellular matrix based material was investigated. They used uh, Cheltrex as a model for uh, extracellular matrix and fetal bovine serum as the chemotractant. The application of four signal microchannels enabled the testing conditions and control experiments to be performed simultaneously in the same device. The results show that the microfluidic strategy supports cellular attachment, proliferation, and migration and invasion without the requirement of any coating procedure. As expected, the invasion of the cancer cells into the extracellular matrix was enhanced by the application of a higher fetal bovine serum concentrations in the signal channels. To further val validate the potential of this device in, for chemotaxis assays, they investigated the effect of epidermal growth factor gradients uh, on cell invasion, also the, the same cells, and different concentrations of the epidermal growth factor uh, were introduced in different signal channels. And uh, intensely, a dose-dependent behavior was observed in the invasion of the cells. So uh, in conclusion, they developed a standalone microfluidic strategy combined with PDMS and state integrated microchannels that offers a pumpless, detachable, reusable microfluidic cell culture assay. And the device reliably supported cellular growth, proliferation, and migration of breast cancer cells. And they demonstrated that the microfluidic strategy enables differential invasion of uh, 
cancer cells in, in response to generated chemical signals while supporting the cellular behavior and uh, functionality. That would be all for today. Thank you. Clear, Rugan. Uh, you can see my screen? Yes, we see it. OK. Um, in this case, I, I, I present um, that's the interesting paper by a combination additive uh, manufacturing with microfluidics and uh, emerging metal of uh, developing over uh, organic chips. That uh, uh, adaptive manufacturing of, uh, like now, um, the 3D printing is the uh, great and powerful uh, technology for combining for uh, the classic microfluidic and then the sublithography for a uh, create a um, different structure for a, <clears throat> a cell culture in the organative and uh, differentiate uh, the cells uh, in, in, in different uh, strategy for uh, devices, okay? Um, in the figure eight, um, show uh, the advantage for combining the 3, 3D printing uh, with a, a classical a microfluid technique, for example, sublithography, but construct a different a structures for for grow a, organs uh, on different shapes in here, and also uh, different shapes in uh, uh, the classical cell sculpture. And after uh, into uh, this this technology uh, functional and um, used for uh, understand the behavior and the organ uh, in, in, in vivo uh, uh, in, in vivo results or the same on in vitro results okay um, in the figure uh, two uh, show a uh, uh, how uh, advantage the technology in the time and uh, in evolution it and uh, combine and different uh, technology and a strategy for for uh, culture and organ achieve uh, culture also. Um, okay. Uh, in the figure three, uh, show how. Uh, construct uh, the technology in in house uh, i would say uh, like uh, it's uh, uh, we can uh, construct uh, with uh, piston and pragmatic and the, the surface and and the oh, other uh, tools but uh, construct and the, the powerful uh, technology in for uh, grow uh, different organs, for example, uh, you can see uh, that uh, this uh, structure for how uh, micro uh, battery and after uh, we can uh, differentiate these cells. Uh, in, in this case, uh, you can see that uh, how goes through the technology in the house. Um, Combine uh, adaptive manufacturing with uh, the classic uh, microfluid uh, devices. Okay, uh, after uh, they prove how and the behavior cells uh, in into this technology, uh, how uh, differentiates in the classic uh, and conventional cell culture, and after uh, compare it with uh, 3D uh, printing and uh, some uh, 3D sculpture, but uh, you can see uh, how uh, this technology uh, in in bioprinting on, on tanks uh, after it, the the cells are uh, uh, super right, um, like it, similar of the. Uh, in, in, in vivo results or also uh, we can uh, construct uh, 
tour with uh, uh, droplets on, on our drops, uh, but uh, show uh, how uh, different uh, cells uh, interaction in, in in delivery drugs or uh, organ reaction on, on the primary drugs, okay? Uh, you can see this, uh, how see the, the technology, uh, it's, it's incredible for me, but you can see the uh, combine and in different cells on, and cis culture, uh, co-culture and, and different uh, techniques. Uh, for me, uh, in, in our lab, uh, I need to uh, combine the tracer via printing with uh, and, uh, in our technology use uh, conventional data bar uh, improve uh, our, not, uh, our technology, okay? Um, that is all. Uh, Can you clearly see my screen? Yes, we see it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, um, I'm going to inform you about an automated method for counting red blood uh, cells using image processing. Uh, in this paper, technique has been uh, introduced to count uh, red blood cells automatically that can facilitate physicians for diagnosing diseases in fast and efficient way. Uh, now we're going to to talk about the, the technique util, utilized. Uh, first of all, uh, image uh, acquisition. Uh, if you want to provide information about the, the input image of blood cells and corresponding uh, grayscale image. At the same time, uh, image uh, segmentation uh, is used to extract objects from background. Each pixel in the image is replaced uh, by black pixel. If the intensity value of, of image uh, is uh, less than some threshold value or white pixel uh, if the intensity value is more than the the threshold values on the other hand uh, regarding image uh, morphology it can be used to extract feature or image regions such as boundary extraction uh, morphological filtering uh, in a medium filtering uh, each uh, each input pixel is replaced by the medium of the gray label according to this this formula this uh, according to this uh, this equation uh, where uh, image is the input uh, image on which filtering is applied and and is the size of the of the of the mask uh, uh, about a uh, edge detection uh, correspond to to discontinuity in the in the gray level in an image uh, if the image source is defined uh, as eight uh, then g respects to x um g to respect to y are the horizontal and vertical uh, derivative approximation and asterisk uh, is the is the convolution operation you can see in in figure four h detection a, a sample a sample image in addition uh, Image smoothing is used to to enhance the quality of H in image region. Uh, boundaries can be obtained uh, by erosion, uh, as you see here in, in, in Figure Five. Uh, regarding hue uh, transformation, uh, red blood cell uh, are detected using technique by determining uh, by determining the center point of the of the circle. Uh, the circle hue transform is applied to, to detect uh, and draw circles. The circles is described by two, follow, two following equations. Uh, you see here in, in, in figure six, uh, boundaries uh, of cells are detected uh, using hood uh, transformation. Uh, once the boundaries of the red blood are detected, uh, number of the cells uh, can be, uh, can be contacted. On the other hand, uh, figure seven uh, provides information about the, the proposed methodology. 
uh, the process comprises, oh, sorry, the process uh, comprises uh, of image acquisition followed by numerous image processing operations, uh, which are cementation, filtering, uh, erosion, and counting of cells, as we mentioned. The counting of uh, red blood cells uh, will be uh, done on the basis of age uh, detection using a uh, hue transformation. Uh, regarding uh, experimental results, uh, we can see here in figure uh, in this figure eight a few sample uh, image employed in experimental uh, and respective output image with uh, with blue cell uh, count count. So on the other hand, uh, this table to everyone show the the comparison uh, of result between. Uh, the counting uh, of red blood cells uh, using proposed uh, algorithm and um, through manual counting, it clearly shows that proposed approach uh, it's able to to count the cell with with good accuracy. Uh, figure, this figure, figure nine, uh, provides information about the facts uh, presented in this table, table one. Uh, about accuracy, sorry, about accuracy, uh, we can mention that it can be uh, calculated uh, according to this this formula. Uh, where TN and TP are the numbers of correlates and segmented positive uh, and negative samples, and uh, FN and FP are false negative and false positive, I mean uh, numbers of incorrectly segmented samples. And finally, uh, table four shows the different parameters uh, for the proposed algorithm, and we can see uh, that it achieved uh, overall accuracy of 91.6% for different uh, blood samples, uh, this suggests that the proposed uh, technology can be uh, effectively uh, used by pathologists to automate uh, the process of cell counting, which can be helpful to, to physicians to diagnose diseases uh, in a fast and, and proficient way. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Okay, good morning. And today I'm going to uh, talk about this topic, effect of surfactant dynamics and flow patterns inside drops moving in rectangular microfluidic channel. So here the idea is that the authors want to uh, test four surfactants that are dissolved in the dispersed space. So the dispersed space is going to be the, the liquid that is going to be dispersed into droplets. So here they represent, in this illustration, they represent the flow patterns um, that are, so the droplet is um, stressed by some forces. As you can see here, the uh, green arrows represent the um, stress that the droplet is, um, is ex is uh, suffering while it is crossing uh, the top wall of the rectangular microchannel. It also, you can see it here at the side, and they are going to uh, simulate the middle, the middle um, plane of the droplet. So this um, rectangular here in the middle of the droplet is going to be the location at which the simulations that they a perform are going to be a uh, scene. So for the dispersed phase, they use a, a, a mixture of um, glycerol and water. And then uh, for the oleous uh, phase, the continuous phase is going to be silicon oil. Here are the properties of the continuous and dispersed phases, as you can see, the density, viscosity, and the interfacial tension. So this is a um, the most important parameter as the surfactants are going to decrease the interfacial tension. Here are the surfactants that they use, some ionic and uh, non-ionic surfactants, and they are going to um, use um, these um, particles that are 200 nanometers so that they are going to be used as tracers. And with the uh, speckle, that they uh, present the speckle patterns are going to be used um, in order to, to trace the fluid and to be able to 
um, to represent them because they they use these um, Gauss particle velocimetry. So that's why they use these very little particles. And here there is the schematic of the architecture of the microchannels. And in the red rectangle, you see the observation field. Uh, that is the location at which the droplets are going to be imaged. Okay. So um, they are going to compare the surfactants through the capillary number. As you can see here, is the relation between the dispersed and, um, and the continuous um, and the viscosity, sorry, the, the forces, the, the capillary number measures the relation between the, the viscosity and the, uh, and, and, the, um, and the density. Okay, so here is um, the different capillary, capillary numbers, and they are going to represent here in this uh, velocity um, thermal map where and at which plane, so here is the, the middle plane in the A is the middle plane, and then 14 micrometers above the middle plane, uh, 60 micrometers on top and 80 micrometers. So here we see the distribution and at which points the velocity is higher. And you can see here the velocity is represented by arrows, how the, the vortices are going to be formed. So here, for example, at D, at 80 micrometers above the middle plane, you can see the vortices that are going, that are going to be experimented by the droplets. So there are also uh, the flow fields. Um, here are the droplets without surfactant. These are the thermal uh, representations of the velocity. And then with the surfactant properties, they measure the interfacial tension and they change the concentration of the surfactant. So here is uh, represented with this um, equation of a state uh, the four surfactants, how they decrease the interfacial tension. And um, here are detailed the properties of each. And then we are going to see how they uh, compare these surfactants in order to time. For example, there are surfactants that equi equilibrate uh, really slowly, as you can see here, the twin 20 and the Triton X100, they it takes uh, more seconds for them to equilibrate while the, the other surfactants, uh, are they equilibrate in one second. That's why they uh, decrease the surface tension uh, faster. And then they um, they uh, simulated the behavior when these uh, fast equilib equilibrium surfactants are used. And here we can see how the uh, the droplets, how the, the 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 flow pattern is distributed while these surfactants are used. For example, here the droplets were laden with Triton X10 X100, and we see how the the vortices are formed and at which um, um, parts of the plane. Uh, here you see the vortices, and these are also uh, here they call it the corner flow, and it is um, produced by the Marangoni effects. Also, they try different concentrations of the surfactant, so with a critical missile concentration, and here we see. A different, a different concentrations, what happens. So um, they concluded a, how these surfactants um, modificate the, the droplets. So they slowly equilibrated surfactants produce a corner flow, while when the droplets doesn't have any surfactant, a two symmetrical vortices um, near to the side walls and two larger vertical vortices due to the interactions of top and bottom wall of the channel are produced. Okay, thank you. Okay. One minute, please.
Um, okay, this is my presentation. Um, the topic is studying Parkinson disease using uh, C elegance models in microfluidic devices. Um, uh, Parkinson disease is a progressive neurological disorder associated with the loss of dopaminergic neurons. Um, uh, C elegance offers several advantages. Uh, for a neurobehavioral study, including a simple neural system. Um, this article looks at microfluidic platforms, they're uh, suitable, suitable for in vitro studies. In this part, uh, Parkinson was the first to discover paralysis in, in 1817. Uh, um, in 1895, uh, Rizzo raised the hypothesis that the disease affects the, the black substance, causing different uh, tremors, uh, muscles, uh, fitness, bradykinesia. Um, in, in this part, uh, C. elegans has become a model me mechanized for biological studies. These worms uh, were grown on ENG agar plates. The full source is Ecole of OP15 with various uh, nutrients. Um, the use of um, the use of acetylcholinoline, a compound straight from the herb Conidalis vanciana, uh, at a concentration of uh, 10 micromolar, was evaluated uh, to identify mobility defects. Uh, using a, a green florence protein. A different compounds were found to mitigate the warm phenotype. Um, a zero a per zero five millimolar lysuride, a zero per five millimolar nicotine, and six hydroxydopamine. Uh, furthermore, they induce various behavioral de deficits. Uh, this will serve a a surrogates for relevant uh, neurodegeneration. Uh, the behavior of the one against uh, a six hydroxydopamine uh, did, did not affect uh, added uh, valproic acid, a compound used a, a drug for epilepsy. Um, a through genetic analysis, it was identified that uh, some worms uh, had involved in the dopaminergic neuron and accumulation of the uh, alpha syn protein and acetylcholinoline exert uh, a blocking effect, uh, blocking apoptosis pathways, increasing the activity of, of protosomes. Um, and, uh, and, and this part, um, in part, uh, part A, the chip uh, has conical channels with uh, 20 parallel columns and, and seven rows to increase the ability to image and stimulate uh, multiple words uh, simultaneously. Uh, part B, the first approach was achieved by using a, a PDMS membrane to push the word into the channel. Uh, a CO, a CO2 is diffused as an anesthetic to immobilize worms. A membrane is uh, between two PDMS layers. Uh, one contains the worms fluid channel, the other contains the control channel uh, to bypass the membrane and, and a worm moving and apply CO2. Uh, part C. Uh, the world was uh, longitudinally immobilized by using small suction channels uh, lateral along the body of the world. And the uh, part D, uh, the response of C elegance uh, to, to electricity, uh, electricity is uh, demonstrated, uh, called electrotaxis. The world uh, uh, goes to the negative pole of a uh, of a direct uh, current electric file or it stops when the electric file uh, lowers the frequency. And the conclusion, uh, the day the road of Parkinson is not known, 
Uh, however, an increase in, in alpha C protein and the generation of neuromoment have been identified. And C elegance is a, a, a cost effective model to uh, investigate neurodegenerative disease. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Do you see my screen? Yes, we see it. Okay. Mm. In, in this, in, 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 today, I, I will talk, talk, uh, talk about this paper, Propulsion and Mixing Generate by the digitized light of C elements. This paper quote the paper that deals with the dynamic of C elements and that I spoke about last week. In, in, in this paper, they ex, ex, experimentally simulate the motion of the head segment of C elegans by introducing a reciprocating and rocking plate. Mm. The experiment, experimental studies show that when C elegans swings the water, the renal, renal number except a zero point two and the world's head undergoes a flopping oscillation with one degree of freedom. Uh, the experimental results are, uh, are, the, are there. Uh, and we can see the oscillation, uh, harmonical oscillation in, in, in twice case. Uh, and almost no traveling weight along its body, increasing the viscosity of the surrounding fluid dramatically, dramatically changed the gait. In the last week, we, 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 we saw that the uh, amplitude of motion of the sea elegans increased with the uh, higher viscosity. They experiment in this, this paper, in, in, the objective is to reproduce the, the, those results with um, experimental simulation. The experimental apparatus consists of a blade, in these figures in, we can see, a blade with two degrees of freedom um, that moves in a viscose fluid. Um, the, the motion is rotational in, in, this, in this form or this form. Um, and translation, translation motion um, only in X edge. In figure, Figure who, figures 1c show the edge view of the blade which undergoes a rectilinear motion, translation motion uh, two, in the X positive direction with a constant angle of the attack. Uh, the experimental simulation is shown in figure two in propulsion and mixing by reciprocating and rocking blade. In, 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 in this case, uh, the, the blade is that A and B, and they can move uh, in the 
X the X direction. The, the then bit the impede oscillation is is shown here. Show it here and and the fluid stream and its waveform with decreasing wavelength lambda is showed here. The temporal dis distance between successive peaks are identical. The numerical simulation is showed too in these figures. The experimental result that is and the numerical simulation is here. In, in, this, in this paper, the simulation, numerical simulation is explained uh, and used the Navier-Stokes uh, equation uh, with uh, specific uh, conditions of boundary. Um, the numerical simulation is is shown too and it is near from experimental result. Um, finally, I I can uh, I, I, I can say that the head of the C elegance uh, describe uh, a close close trajectory of the uh, phase space and in, in this sense, um, their motion is uh, is harmonic. is harmonical motion cycle. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, are there any questions? Oh, okay, I, I have a question for Eric. Um, Eric, uh, do you think this um, filter, a uh, Hugh filter, um, can it be used um, to identify, for example, uh, droplets and to count them? Um, is it possible to use this uh, Hugh uh, filter to identify the droplets in an image? Oh. Uh, sorry, I think uh, Eric is, is now here. Um, okay, <laughs> all right. Maybe he had internet problem and um, connection. Okay, uh, then um, uh, a question for uh, Rocio. Uh, Rocio, um, um, in the chemotaxis um, experiments, um, where did they, um, in which location of the chip did they inject the serum so that they have this gradient uh, to, for the migration of the cancer cells? Uh, you have the, the polymer channel mm -hmm. that has uh, pores, and you have on the one side, you have the culture channel, and on the other side, you have the chemotaxis uh, channel. So there's a, the gradient goes from uh, the chemotaxis uh, channel through the polymer to the through the hydrogel to the chamber. And you can see the invasion in the, uh, uh, in the polymer, in the, yes. All right, thank you so much, Rosie. <laughs> okay, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, so uh, thank you everyone. If there are no more questions, uh, we will see you uh, next week. See you all next week. <laughs> all right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. See you. See you later.